Hey guys, what's up everyone? Welcome back to a new video. As promised, uh, today we are going to have an in-depth look at the, the new version of the Kali Linux installer that was introduced with version 2020.1 a couple of days ago. And there have been quite a few major changes to the installer and you guys asked me to go in-depth into them and that's exactly what we are going to do in this video. There have been two major changes in particular, one of them being uh, that you can now choose the desktop environment during the installation instead of downloading uh, the installer which includes the desktop environment that you want to use, which makes it a little bit easier to download the actual image and uh, go through the installation and choose it there, which makes more sense in my opinion anyway. The second major change that has been made to the installer is that you are now able to select the tools that you want to install. We go into that in depth in a second, but basically you can now install Kali Linux without any tools pre-installed. You can choose to install all of the tools or just a part of it, but we'll look into that in a second. The reason for that is that you should be able to use Kali Linux as a daily driver, so they give you the option uh, to install a version of Kali Linux that does not include all the hacking tools per default. So you can just go ahead and install the tools you're actually using and uh, to keep the overhead small basically. Parrotsec did a similar thing a longer time ago. I think they provide a uh, desktop uh, version of Parrot OS which is basically the same thing as far as I understand. Which is also a version that does not include hacking tools. So I just want to point out that this is not a how to install Kali Linux video. This is a video about the new version of the installer. If you need a video on how to install Kali Linux on VirtualBox or VMware, check out my videos. Uh, I can also leave a link in the description below. I have videos on both VMware and VirtualBox and I'm just about to produce a new video on how to install Kali Linux on a laptop as well. This is just looking at the new installer and going over that. One thing I do want to show you though is the new uh, revamped download page, which actually not really revamped, I just removed a couple of links there. But uh, if you look here, you just have the option to download Kali Linux and in both 64 and 32 bit, the live image and the net installer and the pre configured um, images for VMware, VirtualBox, and also for Hyper V. Whereas before, there you had the options to download Kali Linux for XFCE, Kali Linux for GNOME, Kali Linux for Lubuntu, or whatever kind of versions they had there. I don't uh, know it on top of my head. But they removed all of them basically and included all of the possible options like GNOME and XFCE and stuff like this into one installer, which I think is great. I just wanted to point that out and now we can go ahead and actually go through the installation. I'll just set up a um, pretty default virtual machine and virtual box. I'll just quickly run you through the settings that I do here in case you want to follow along. So uh, I just uh, have it named Kali Linux. I created a new VM and I put the type on Linux. Uh, the version is Debian 64 bit. Then if you head over to the system tab, I haven't actually configured that. I'll just ramp the RAM up a little bit. Just stay in the green here if you want to do that. Uh, then you are on the safe side. The same goes for processors. Uh, just put it somewhere in the green area here. And, uh, and one more thing I'm going to do. Yeah, check the network, which is on net, which is fine. And that's all we need for now. Actually, one more thing I always do is go to advanced, uh, general advanced, and then also enable the bidirectional shared clipboard and the drag and drop that comes in really handy later. If you want to copy something over from our host computer to our virtual machine, that's really useful. Okay, then we need to go ahead and attach the uh, Kali image. Let's also ramp up the video memory a little bit. Uh, this is all fine. In case you have any graphical glitches after installing this, I found out that setting it from VMS VGA to VBOX VGA helps a little bit. Um, but uh, so far it has been fixed in 2020.1, I haven't experienced any issues. Uh, go to storage next and double click the empty, actually go on, where is it, plus, yeah on the plus here and you can see it's already attached because I ran a test before but what you want to do if it's not attached click on it 
and then select the downloaded ISO file of Kali Linux 2020.1. And what you need to do then is click on it and click on choose. They changed that up a little bit in the latest version of VirtualBox. It used to be a little bit different. And then if we go ahead and start, Kali should boot up. There we go. And graphical install is what we want. Okay, uh, let's see how that looks like. The only shame is we cannot run full screen yet because guest editions are not installed, so it will just stay small. But uh, I think you can read it pretty fine, it should be okay. Um, the first thing uh, that's uh, still as it was before is to choose a language, we'll keep it on English. A Choose a location, uh, doesn't matter. Um, I'll choose whatever that, Curaçao. Didn't want it, but why not? <laughs> and uh, locals, I always leave on United States usually. And then I want a German keyboard that's also still the same like in the previous installer, which of course, why would I change that? And I think now we might get into the interesting part. I'll just skip over those parts so you don't have to wait while this is loading up and we'll be back once the next step pops up here which is already now. So, uh, configure a host name, obviously that's clear. Leave it on Kali as I, uh, or choose it whatever you want. Domain name, we don't need. Uh, full name for the new user. Um, so, you will not be able to use the default user anymore, I think. Um, the default user, let's check that a user account will be created for you to use instead of the root user. I'm not sure you need to put the new user, but um, if you download a pre-configured image, there is no default user uh, Tor or root Tor anymore. It was changed to Kali Kali. That's a new, um, new thing as well to Kali 2020.1. Um, select a username for the new account. Yes, that's also Kali. We just do that as well. And we do a password, Kali. And next, this is still as it has been in the previous installer. Uh, let's see what comes up next. So this is the first time I actually run through the installer too, so uh, bear with me if I go over some hiccups here. Um, guided, use entire disk is fine for VirtualBox. We'll choose the virtual hard disk. And all file files in one partition, that's also fine. Finish partitioning, write changes to disk is also fine. And then uh, if you want to make sure that everything is correct, double check it here. Uh, select yes to write changes to the disk and then click on yes. So it's already installing the base system. I'm wondering where the option comes for the tool installation, probably after the base installation is finished, which actually would make sense now if I think of it. Um, let's see we should be able to choose our desktop environment and our uh, tools in a second here okay the base installer is finished uh, i don't have a proxy now it's configuring apt uh, probably updating apt select and install software updating software okay that sounds interesting that sounds like what we want to look at mm -hmm. Okay, it's doing its thing. I'll pause it again for a second until that's done. And here we are. So at the moment only the core of the system is installed. To tune the system to your needs, you can choose to install one or more of the following predefined collections of software. So we have the uh, desktop environment here. I don't know what that does if you click on Kali desktop environment. Probably like a placeholder that they did not remove this checkbox here. Um, but uh, per default it's XFCE, that's the new default for Kali, I'm gonna leave it at that. So there's also the possibility to install GNOME, KDE, LXDE and MATE, which is nice. And now we have the option to choose our tools. So there's generic meta packages, Kali Linux, that's probably some kind of default. Um, a quick cut at this part guys because I already recorded this part of the video and I have to re-record it now because I have selected um, uh, everything, almost all tools in the previous take of the video. 
but what it did after clicking on continue was it took about 17 minutes or 19 minutes with my 100 mbit internet connection to download all the tools and after I downloaded the tools and tried to install it the installation failed. So I don't know what happened there but now I'm going to try that again with a different option. I also went ahead and tried to research what all the different options actually include but I was not able to find any information on it. So I tried to search for uh, the Kali everything almost all tools that I have previously installed and failed. But as you can see uh, there is no information on which tools um, are going to be installed. This article here is from 2016 so that's pretty outdated. Um, and also I searched for Kali default recommended tools and as you can see there's nothing just articles about uh, the best hacking tools. So I guess they will just uh, update the documentation regarding in that regard in the future. Um, but for now I'm not able to determine what kind of tools are going to be installed if you choose either of those options. Except obviously of the uh, base system with no pen testing tools. So let's try that one more time. Uh, we'll leave it on XFCE for the desktop environment, that's the default. Uh, then we'll leave this, this came pre-clicked uh, also before. And um, this time we are going to leave it on a default recommended tools and see if the installer will work then. Uh, what else do we have here? We also have the option to install tools by purpose, so information gathering, sniffing and spoofing, all those kinds of things you can install separately. I think this is basically representing the Kali uh, menu, the main menu. Those are all the different steps on the main menu, uh, going through the uh, different parts of a penetration test more or less. And then at the bottom there is standard system utilities, which we obviously will also leave. That also comes pre-checked per default. Okay, so to go over it again, we leave basically we leave everything as default. Um, and we click next, and uh, let's see how long it takes this time. As I said, when I choose when I've chosen all tools previously, it took 19 minutes uh, to finish the download, and it's actually downloading files here, so it's not pulling it off the ISO file. It's downloading the packages and installing it afterwards. But this looks like it's going to be much, much faster. Just a quick update at this part. The installer is still running and installing uh, the tools. Uh, we are about five minutes in now. Okay, looks like this time it uh, worked. Now we are set to install group bootloader. That's fine. Just leave it on yes, click on continue, then select the, the VBOX uh, hard drive and group is being installed. There we go, installation complete. Let's click on continue to wrap up the installation and Kali should now reboot. Let's see if it's also booting up or if there's another error. So I don't know what was that about with the um, everything selection here. I did not test the large either or the light. Now we know that default is working, which is fine. If you experience anything like that with any of the other installers, please uh, comment below on the video so we can have a look or maybe we can forward it to the team at Kali Linux and they'll be able to fix it soon. Okay, let's log in with the default credentials. Let's try if that's working. And now we should be set up with a pretty vanilla version of Kali Linux. Okay, so probably we need to go ahead and install the VirtualBox guest uh, additions. Uh, that actually looks like it's already installed. That's a, uh, that's definitely something new as well. Let's see if that's the case. sudo apt. First we need to update before we can um, look for new software. And by the way guys, if you like this video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and hit the notification bell so you get notified about <laughs> new videos and please also leave a comment below to help the YouTube algorithm to place me. Um, back on topic, sudo apt install virtualbox guest x11 and let's see if it's already installed and it is already installed. So they included the VirtualBox guest editions in the default uh, Kali installer which I think is a great addition to the installer so you don't need to install it manually anymore because most people are anyway running Kali Linux on a virtual machine as, at least as far as I know. 
And I think with that we have covered almost all of the uh, changes that have been made to the installer. I pretty much like it. Of course, it's a shame that uh, it didn't work with the first try and that the installer crashed, but uh, that's uh, going to happen simply with uh, changes that you make. Sometimes I guess the Kali guys will fix it very soon, the developers over there. And as I said, uh, if you happen to have the same problem, leave a comment below so we can forward it to the developers at Kali Linux. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll hope to see you back in the next video. Until then, goodbye.